Hilary Calvert, uh, former ACT MP, former city councillor, former lawyer, uh, and, yeah, current businesswoman. She joins us every week to give a, a chaotic and sometimes insightful view of the world, <laughs> politics, society and culture. She joins us this morning. How are you? I can't see you, but you can see me apparently. I can see you. I don't know why you can't see me. Well, you should. Well, you, there's, there's, I've got, you've, you, that's a very unfortunate thing because I think you probably look better than I do, but there you go. I can't see you. You can see me. We should be swapping. Uh, you had art behind you last time <laughs> I was talking to you. Is it still there? Because you have to tell me now. It is still there. Kelly, Kelly couldn't see it. She said she liked it. So there you go. I don't know why um, you couldn't see it. No. Um, just on that, um, what's been happening in Dunedin lately of any particular moment? Have, the, have they got a hospital yet? Are they calmed down a bit or are they still getting upset about everything? Uh, I find the in hospital discussions about as um, frustrating as the American elections, um, that everyone's got their own reasons for taking the position they're taking and... I've got views on them, but my views are of no consequence to either the American election or the um, Dunedin Hospital, really. Yeah, it's, you're sort of um, you're sort of a, on the um, I don't care what the building looks like, just make sure that the services are there type person, aren't you? Yes. I yep. think services are what just we're actually sensible. thought of. Um, mm. And there's different ways of... Once you're telling people how to do things rather than what you want, um, then you you just get into the into the reeds really, um, and people when they start having opinions, what your what we're now being asked about is things that we have no information that would help us make any valid or useful contribution to. So where people start consulting us on things without any background and without any information that would help. Um, you know, like should somebody be free or something without you having been in a trial or anything? It's just sort of, and and what we want with the American election would be one of those. Um, I mean, we can say we, we don't talk want about today yeah. though, and talking about building stuff because um, the the Needham Hospital is being built as we talk. Um, although <laughs> I don't know how many floors will be there, but it doesn't matter by the time they're finished. Um, you want to have a chat about um, the, because I, I interviewed him on the program last week, I think last Tuesday in actual fact, uh, to, about Chris Pink and builders now being, well, if they are registered, being able to sign off their own works rather than councils. And you're, you're raising the spectrum yes. of, of leaky homes to do with that. that. Well, I wasn't raising the spectrum of saying that as soon as somebody says to the average person, do you want builders to be able to sign off their own work? They say, remember build leaky homes, mm. as if the leaky homes issue came from builders being able to sign off their own work. That's mm. not what it came from. So you ask them, um, and at the moment, people aren't told what happens at the moment. What happens at the moment is that the council charges you money for coming and doing inspections and things, and it come the there's licensed practitioners for plumbers and electricians and other people, and they have paperwork and they sign it off. So the electrician sign if they're a licensed electrician prof practitioner or whatever they are, they sign off the electrics, and somebody else signs off the plumbing, whatever. So somebody from the council turns up, and you say I'm ready for you, and they say well, it's 10 days before I can give you an appointment, so everybody sits around twiddling their thumbs for 10 days. Or I'm not blaming the council for that. I'm just saying that they come and go as to how much time. So they turn up to the building site. They cut up the electrician's piece of paper, the plumber's piece of paper, the builder's piece of paper, and they take them away, and that's their inspection. So what they've done is effectively relied on those people now. That's what they do now. The, the difference, so it isn't as much of a difference as you think. It's not all of a sudden you've got um, 
the council out of it in the and them coming and adding value and the people giving their own views about them. What um, you will get, uh, what the proposal is, is a change in where the damages and lungs fall. So when the leaky buildings um, problem happened, there was three or four different lots of people who could be responsible. So it was the builders who built the home and there was the councils who ticked it off and there was the homeowners and maybe there's, there's some insurance and things. So what um, they ended up with things saying the council will pay 30% and the government will pay X amount and whatever it is. And if you tried to just sue the builder, then the builder has often gone bankrupt when there's a group of things being built and you get a big problem. But the reason why it was more complicated is that there was the rules, and so they've changed the rules and they've made them tighter, but there was how you carry out the rules, which is why the builders were in the gun, because they didn't fulfil the proper rules. And then there's the council for signing them off and the government rules weren't sufficient. So all sorts of people can be involved. So if this goes through, it may change the balance there. So as the proposal is that the builder has got to be a member of master builders or whatever, in good standing sort of, and that they have to have insurance. And for that reason, those builders, if they do things wrong, will be able to be sued usefully because of their insurance. So the government can just say, you need X amount of insurance or X per house or whatever it is or property. So that means you'll be able to more easily sue the builder because they do will have to have insurance or they won't be able to sign them off. It should mean places that do like... Um, down in our neck of the woods, it would be perhaps Breen's or um, TJ Gardner. whatever housing company, TJ yeah. Gardner, I was going to say. Yeah. Um, so they would give, um, they work in different parts of the country and it must drive them crazy because different building inspectors yes, different and licensing people have different. Yeah. yeah, that's right. And it's the same rules but mm. they interpret them Interpreted differently. differently. Yeah, so in this right. case, very frustrating. they'll be able to just build them all yeah. according to what they should be building them, sign them off and have, and, and so those, it'll make it much more straightforward and much easier for those big companies. No, I, so I take Whether your point. It makes so, it, the, the, so the first yeah. defence against the leaky homes argument and that certainly Labor have run and, well, actually Labor's hasn't made up its mind on that yet. It's Labor's actually, sort of thought of this. Yeah, they're not opposed to it. Lukewarm, but yeah, yeah. But they're not. They're not saying it's wrong. Um, but um, uh, some uh, going out the leaky homes argument is, is, as you say, one. Yeah, but wait on. If you're going to be registered as a builder, you've got to, in actual fact, have the insurance backstop. So that's the first thing. But the second thing, also, can I say, Hillary, is, but isn't there also a responsibility upon the people who are getting the home built to make sure? Uh, of uh, basically caveat emptor. It's the most important purchase you'll ever make probably for most people. Um, and don't you have a responsibility yourself to oversee it so that you can be assured that you're not going to end up with a leaky home type incident. Why should you then turn that responsibility that rests on your shoulders um, onto a council who apparently gave consent for something that they might not have done best practice with and are now the only people left standing. Yes, so if you, t if you take away the council, who wasn't really involved in it, it could take it off. In the first way, no. So they didn't deal with it or whatever, but they shouldn't be ticking off things that aren't. But it just adds a amount of cost to have another lot involved. And they've got, of course, deeper pockets because they've got our pockets. Um, there's no particular reason why councils should be involved in the middle of the year. And from the home point of view, they ought to be able to say, hey, if you're a member of your trade and the insurance company is happy, 
your competence and things and they're prepared to insure you and I've got the paperwork to say that you are insured and things, um, you've done your due diligence as a homeowner and a few, and there'll be some builders who um, are either not licensed practitioner or whatever else and are building things that, that are under the threshold of building consents. So some of those will keep doing what they're doing and it'll be a lot cheaper and some of them will work out all right and some of them won't. It moves you back into the homeowners. But the homeowners can make whatever inquiries are appropriate, but at the end of the day, some of them might lose out in any case um, because the builders might not have enough insurance or not, you, you know, you might just be caught between a rock and a hard place. But at the moment, the, like the leaky homes thing went on for years and there's still, you still lose out. So mm. it's not going to make a heap of difference except to insurance companies probably.